I think there was a great deal of serendipity about it. Um, we didn't set about to, to have any kind of collection, if you will. Um, I think we bought our first serious piece in 1980, but we were a young couple. We were in Atlanta. We were in the Atlanta University Center where there, there were a lot of uh, African-American artists, a lot of uh, African-American art teachers and appreciation. And I remember Brenda and I on the weekends would visit the uh, Atlanta University Art Gallery. There was really no art in either one of our homes. And there was no one who had that supposedly eye that you have for the art. It was something that we had to learn, learn on our own. But we, did, um, but we did have this real sense of culture. The exhibition was put together uh, by the Driscoll Center at the University of Maryland. And the way that happened was we uh, had a home in Atlanta. We had a lot of art that was displayed. And the director of the Driscoll Center uh, visited our home. Uh, we like to have uh, artists. Uh, we like to entertain with artists. We like to have art collectors all around. And they were visiting, he and a group of people from D.C. were visiting our home. And we had never thought about a show or an exhibition. And he saw all the art in our Atlanta home and said, we really need to do a show based on your art. It was the first time anyone had ever put that in our mind. So it, that was an interesting thought. And, and it, was, um, it was really uh, interesting when the show got put together and then all this art we'd lived with for years leaves our walls. It's like friends moving out of your house, and I had to get used to that. Well, it was also hard as they pulled the pieces together. We kept saying, how about this piece, how about that piece, because we thought there were so many wonderful works that wouldn't be seen. And, uh, but, you know, at, the, at some point we had to say no. You know, you can only, museums can only take so many pieces. And uh, so, it, as it turned out, there were 72 <coughs> works. And uh, it, was, it was hard for us, but it was also, we received a great, great deal of joy as the show would open in various venues and people would respond to it. Uh, and one of the things that we always um, looked at was that there's a great diversity in the collection. You'll see sculpture, paintings, prints. And one young man walked in and said that he always knew he could be whatever he wanted to be, and he could be an artist, everyone told him. But he didn't know he could paint whatever or do whatever was inside of him. So that diversity was important for students to see, and it made us feel really good. I think one of the things we try and do in our collection as we talk about it is to try and get rid of any myths that people may have about African American artists. And what you'll find as you read about the bios, uh, uh, the information about them, is that they're very they're very talented and very trained individuals. We have probably four artists in the collection who one would consider folk artists, maybe, maybe two. Um, but the others have all gone to the same schools as the University of Georgia, Temple, UCLA, all the great art pr programs. They're trained, and uh, so, in Yale. So it's really, uh, that, that's one, one uh, misconception we always like to correct. One of the things that we've done over the years in terms of our co collection is that um, the collection is, is the result of an interaction between the artist's families, uh, dealers, the artists themselves, and every piece has a history in terms of dealing with another human being. We didn't have someone go out and purchase pieces for us, and we, had, we didn't do a lot of uh, purchasing art uh, by auction. There's, there's a story behind every piece, and Mr. Hayes was someone that we met when he was in Los, living in Los Angeles, and we flew to Los Angeles a number of times before he thought we were nice enough people that he could entrust us with his art. And um, so listening to him tell um, the story of Juke Joint, listening to him tell the story of the lynchers, uh, those two pieces that are in, in, in the collection from him, um, you know, that, that's a fascinating, that's a fascinating story. And so, um, so I would say maybe those were my two favorite pieces in the in, in the collection, although the Norman Lewis abstraction, uh, which was done the year that I was born, and uh, you may know Norman Lewis was a friend of Jackson Pollock and uh, was very much involved in uh, abstract expressionalism and 
in um, New York, and uh, that piece was one of the first pieces um, that he did as he was moving away from figurative. They're all just very, very special for me. And uh, the, um, I remember when we were being interviewed after the gift of Georgia, some reporter called and said, now these aren't your best paintings, are they? And I said, well, they are our best. They're among our best. And they, she said, why would you give your best away? And I said, why would you want to start anything without giving your best? So it's hard to single for me because we thought they were all our best. And I said, I'd love to see the, um, the, the Driscoll bag. I'd love to see the Delaney's bag or the Styles or whatever. I'd love seeing those, but they're someplace else now. And so they're all really very, very special. And, and one person said, how do you decide on how the work gets um, purchased? And I said, I think the biggest <coughs> disagreement Larry and I often have is where it goes at the house on what wall it will go. And we've, we've really realized over the years that we both have, we have an eye for what we like and the other person will eventually learn to love it or just learn to you know, tolerate it. We have a disease. <laughs> and so, you, it's a disease. Uh, so the house is filling up again. And, and so, um, and that's, that's a good thing. And uh, we, we really do enjoy uh, dealing with artists. We enjoy sharing our collection with others, our friends, and we've been um, recently involved with uh, interacting more with other collectors, which I think is really a lot of fun and something that I enjoy. And, and you grow as someone who collects art. Uh, you start at one point and then you end up at another point. I think uh, art is so important to you know our humanity uh, as people, and, it, and culture is so important uh, to who we are as people. And I think it's just fun being uh, a process of seeing how man has in, expressed himself through visual art and being a part of collecting that, being a part of sharing that, and being a part of watching people who see your painting, for, see your paintings sometimes for the first time and, and what they get out of the painting, and, and especially young people, but, but, but all, all people. And, uh, that's a great deal of, um, I get a great deal of enjoyment out of that too. When visitors are interacting with the works of art and tradition redefined, I'm really struck by how they are making personal connections with the works. There's so many stories to be told in them that it just seems to inspire visitors. And, you know, children and adults, university students, they all seem to be coming at the works from different, from different directions. Um, but still just getting such meaning from them. The histories that are, are there are part of all of our past and they really are just something that we can look at and that really kind of offer a place for us to, to start, but then in a way they're also contemporary because, you know, there's still problems that we're facing today and still stories that are being told today. Um, so, you know, just in terms of of just dialogue and, and interactions with the works. I've just really found that it's almost just an endless friendship that we have with them because we can continue to go back to them and see new things and learn new things about not only the works but also about ourselves. And you know, I'm thinking in particular of students who saw the Benny Andrews work and just really seem to be struck by the emotion that was found in it and you know we're really creating just narratives about the, the man in the painting and you know we found that a lot that they were making connections between their courses and what their interests were and the works of art um, in addition it just seemed to inspire them to tell stories um, you know we've done poetry activities with some of the works we did a panel discussion with the artists um, that was a really great conversation Adrian Childs um, she was the moderator for it, and we invited all of the living artists that were represented in Tradition Redefined to come and, and speak. Um, it really gave them a chance to kind of talk more about their work um, and, you know, to look for connections that we wouldn't have necessarily thought of um, between, between the works that were in the exhibition.